Hi, students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Budapest. I hope everybody's weekend is off to a good start. You're having a healthy and productive weekend so far. This class is a questions and answers session for our members to get to know the exam a little bit better. So welcome members. I see that we have a new member joining us, Natalie Nikiforova. Thank you for joining our uh, group of members, Natalie. Uh, please send me uh, an email so I can hook you up with those uh, videos and exams. Okay. Hi, Maksud. Hi, Sammy. So again, this is a question and answer session. Uh, members, this is where you have a chance to ask me uh, any question that uh, you've come across during your studies or if you have questions about uh, the nature of the exam, the structure, whatever comes to mind, it's okay. If you have a question, somebody else probably does too. So think about those questions. We'll get back to those in a minute and it'll be first come, first serve. Uh, students, this class is presented to you by aehelp.com. For academic IELTS help, please join us there. And for general IELTS, visit and join us at G. I-E-L-T-S help.com. That's general IELTS help.com. And on both of these websites, you can find lots of answers and help as well. Uh, so uh, these websites look like this. This is the academic one here. Click that big red button to join and you can access lots of blogs and forums as well as chat and exams and lots of other materials to get answers and increase your score. This is the general version here with the green background. Click that big red button to join there. Okay, Maksud, I see you're asking a question already, which is good. I'll get back to that in just a moment. Uh, again, students, uh, Natalia, N Natalie, sorry, Natalie, um, my email is adrian at aehelp.com, so send me an email there, Natalie, so I can hook you up with the perks. If anybody has questions as well, you can always send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. Uh, students, these classes, uh, the live IELTS classes are, are uh, 1330 to 1430 and 15 to 16 o'clock. Um, usually Wednesday to Saturday, Wednesday to Saturday. Okay. So today we have this question and answer session followed by a speaking part three where everybody can join the chat. Of course, everybody's welcome to watch this class as well. And that's according to central European time. Okay. Hi, Musafir. Okay, so this is a question and answer session. It's first comes first serve, but if uh, some of your questions overlap, then I'll try to uh, link them up. Um, so uh, go ahead and just uh, fire away. Ask me any question that comes to mind. I'm doing very well. Thank you for asking, Maksud. Um, so Maksud is asking, may I use question sentence in writing task two? Okay. Um, and I think this has come up a few times. No, the answer is no, Maksud. Okay, so Maksud is asking, uh, can I use a question sentence in task two? Okay, uh, the answer, Maksud, is no. And I'll explain why. Okay. So again, students, it's important to know that our products are designed by leading experts in education and education psychology, not uh, teachers. So not just teachers. I don't, I want to say that as nicely as possible, but experts in literature and so on from uh, leading universities. So the answer here, and you'll see why I said that. Okay. So the answer here is no, do not use uh, questions in essays, period, including task two. Okay. Uh, why? So here's the logic, okay? Uh, students, whenever you learn information from your teachers, including your IELTS teachers or lessons that you see online, always ask the why question. Why? Why not use questions? What's wrong with questions? Why should I avoid these, okay? Um, no, do not use questions in essays. Why? Okay. Why? 
because the goal of an essay is to answer a question, not to ask a question. Okay. Task two is a persuasive essay, like many essays in university. Uh, a persuasive essay seeks to convince the reader of a position or an argument. So this is the science of writing, as a couple of our members very cleverly realized uh, that this is the science of literature and this is the science of writing. So. Um, Persuasive essays, persuade means to convince. It's another way to say convince. And task two seeks to convince the reader of a position or an argument. Uh, when you ask a question in an essay, it usually weakens your persuasion. Okay? Uh, because the reader will come up with their own concepts. If their ideas differ from yours, the essay will become awkward. Okay? So, Uh, for example, if the essay uh, is asking you, so I'll give you an example of this, Maksud, so you can kind of see what I mean by this. Um, so um, if the essay is asking, uh, which is better for uh, commuting to work, public transit, or personal vehicle, okay? Uh, choose one side and give uh, explanations to support your opinion. So let's say, Maksud, that that's your task two question, okay? And uh, in your essay, you start with, okay, so this is your introduction, you start with, um, what is better, so let's say you do a paraphrase and you paraphrase it as a question. You say, what is better to go to work and back, um, one's own car or mass transit? This is an important question. Okay, so now if your reader... Uh, reads this question, here your reader in their mind will answer this question. Okay, so you have to think about your audience. Your reader is going to say, oh, I think a car is better because that's what I use and da 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 da. Okay. Now, if you're going to argue for public transit, you've created a difficult situation for yourself. So don't ask questions. Okay. Um, here's a little bit of an interesting point for those of you who are really into writing and want to advance and reach those very high levels of literature. Uh, questions in writing are only used, I'm going to specify here a little bit more. So questions in academic writing are only used in business as well when the answers may be uncertain and we want the input of the audience. Okay. So when we're not sure about the answer and we are curious about what our reader might think and we challenge our reader to think differently from what we explain, then we might include uh, questions, okay? Uh, but 
this is not the IELTS. So again, in the IELTS, do not use questions in your essays. Okay, I know that was a very uh, in-depth explanation uh, for that, Maksud, um, but I hope that makes sense. Okay, so and I can see Maksud, you said, okay, I got it, I got it, right? You don't want to question your reader. Your goal as the writer is to answer the question, not to ask a question. Okay, cool. So. A lot of detail there, but uh, it's a good one. It's a good question. Also, Maksud, um, a couple more with this one uh, for a, a couple of similar questions that I've been asked. Uh, so this is in line with this. Also, do not use quotes for your introduction. Instead, use your own words. Okay. Uh, again, it's another kind of a trick that some students try to use for the introduction is a quote from some famous person or from the, translated from their own culture. It's not a good idea. That can be very confusing, okay? So don't use quotes either. Don't use questions. Don't use quotes, okay? Your hook should simply be an interesting short statement that catches the reader's attention using the topic, okay? Uh, Natalie says, can I use idioms? Okay, that's a good question. So, uh, do not use long idioms in your writing or speaking. Okay. So, for example, um, don't throw bricks when you live in a glass house. The first one that came to mind. It means don't be a hypocrite. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so <laughs> don't use long idioms like that. Okay. Uh, instead, use short idiomatic language like phrasal verbs, for example. Maja, welcome to our group of members. Send me an email after the class so I can hook you up with perks. Okay. So instead, Use short idiomatic language uh, like um, phrasal verbs. Okay, some of you might recognize this, like uh, I live in the heart of Budapest, which means I live in the center of Budapest. Okay, so this is a, a short in the heart of, that's just a very short idiomatic expression. So short idiomatic language like phrasal verbs or like this uh, example here, okay? Um, that's fine, okay? Uh, Angelina, don't use a take-home message in task one. Uh, you do not include an opinion in task one, okay? Uh, I see that there are some other questions, members, and I'll get to those, but I said that I'll group uh, like uh, similar types of questions. So questions that are focusing on writing, it makes sense for me to group them right now, okay? So, um, Natalie, does that make sense about the idioms, okay? And um, it's uh, good to use idiomatic language, short idiomatic language in speaking and uh, task one general writing. It's also okay in some places for task to general or academic, but do not use idioms in task one academic writing, okay? Uh, try to stay away from very colloquial language, okay? All right. Okay. Um, for task one, so this is uh, this question was from Angelina. Okay, Angelina, uh, can I uh, include a take home message in task one? And again, the answer here, Angelina, is no, uh, because uh, task one academic, of course 
is an expository essay where your job is to report and explain what you see in the given graphic, okay? You must not include opinionated language, okay? So you can't say, well, it's probably because people liked um, bicycles more in 2010 that they uh, used bikes more than cars. We don't know that they liked bicycles more than cars. The data is just showing that there's more bicycle use. Uh, perhaps people wanted to become more fit and not because they liked the bikes, but because they wanted to become fit that they used bicycles more. So that's just an example, right? We don't know that, okay? Yeah, so Angelina, you have to be very careful. Exactly, you have to be careful with opinionated language, okay? In academic aisles, you don't have opinionated language. And that's one of the big ways, Angelina, that a, a summary is different than a conclusion. Conclusions usually include the opinion of the writer or some kind of ending to the story. A summary simply... Uh, summarizes, condenses the information, and maybe reveals a piece of information within that, okay? All right? Yeah, exactly, Angelina, exactly. Okay, I'm going to jump back because I saw there was some other questions as well, members, and um, I do want to respect the order of requests here. So I'm going to just uh, hop back in the chat. Give me one moment. Um, all right, so that's a, that's a lot about task two. Again, on the websites, you can find a lot of information on task two as well. And of course, one way, students, to know what you're doing in your writing more accurately is use the editing service on the websites, okay? That's six cents US per word. So it's $9 for 150 word task one or uh, $15 for 250 word task two. And I know that's expensive in some countries, but that's the economic difference. Um, okay, so um, next question is by Roshni Kunte. Roshni says, while speaking with me, it always goes with because and cannot make sentence different, how to make. Uh, Roshni, I'm not exactly sure what you're asking me there. Can you state that a little bit differently? I'm going to try to read it again and make sense of it, but if you can write it differently, that might help me. So while speaking, it always goes with because and cannot make a sentence different. Okay, um, I think I get what you're saying, Roshni. So um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is what you're asking me, Roshni. Okay, so... Uh, when I'm giving explanations for my answers in the speaking section, I find myself repeating because uh, too often. Okay. Uh, what can I do? Avoid this word repetition. Okay, that's a good question, Roshni. I think I think that's what you're asking me. Um, and if it's not, then just let me know. Okay, I'll give you the answer here in a second. I'm just going to ask. Uh, Roshni, just say yes, it is, or no, it's not. Okay. Um, Beck John says, yeah, I have the same problem. Uh, Roshni, is this what you're what what you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see that. Okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah, I see it. Cool. Okay. Answer. All right, good. So um, remember this. Um, because, of course, uh, belongs to the group of subordinating conjunctions. Because is a subordinating conjunction of cause plus effect, okay? 
Um, so yeah, absolutely, students. It's a really good idea to diversify your use of conjunctions. Okay, so it's a really, really good idea to practice and diversify. So uh, what you need to do, so you need to diversify and practice your cause and effect conjunctions. So because, as you know, there are lots of other ways, uh, therefore, as a result, since, in order to, okay, just to name a few. Also, so this is step number one, okay, and step number two, uh, as well, to make your language more dynamic, remember to shift the main clause and dependent clause around, okay? So, uh, for example, I think countries should make uh, university education free because this is a wise investment into the future productivity of the nation. By the way, uh, students, when I'm showing you examples like that, by all means, repeat and say it nice and loud, okay? All right, so what you want to do is you want to go, okay, I just said this, so maybe you said this in your speaking, you recorded this on your phone. So now what you want to do is you want to change this, okay? So first we can just grab the connecting word, the connecting word uh, because and replace it with one of the other uh, subordinating conjunctions of cause and effect. So we can say, I think countries should make university education uh, free since uh, this is a wise investment into the future productivity of the nation. Okay? And then you want to change it again. So change it another time. Change it a second time. Uh, and this time, switch the dependent and the independent clause. Okay? So what you can do is like this. Since making education, university, education or since university education is an investment into a nation's productivity or future productivity, governments ought to make it free, okay? And then go over all three of them. So repeat after me. Say it with me, uh, students. Here we go. Um, I think countries should make university education free because this is a wise investment into the future productivity of the nation. I think countries should make university education free since this is a wise investment into the future productivity of the nation. Since university education is an investment into a nation's future productivity, governments ought to make it free. Now you're really rolling with the punches. But in order to do this, uh, Roshni, you really have to um, practice it, okay? I'm just going to get a little bit of a better focal point here because I think the screen's a little bit blurry, so... Just bear with me here, students. Okay, I think that's better. 
Just getting you a sharper image so you can see it a little bit more clearly. You're not going blind. Okay. All right. Um, so you got it, Roshni? Cool. All right. Okay. And I saw there were some other questions coming up. Now, again, it's first comes first serve students. So let me just kind of roll through what's being said here and then I'll... Uh, Um, okay, so let me see here. Uh, the next question came from Pavan. Uh, Pavan says, what if I write my own sentence in task one instead of paraphrasing the question? Um, Pavan, that you can do, I think, for the summary. So if you have uh, your own ideas and after, while observing the graph or the table of what's going on, you might want to save that for the summary. In the introduction, don't go too fancy, okay? You want to be quick, Pavan, in task one. So paraphrasing the question with more details, that becomes your own sentence, okay? So uh, Pavan's kind of asking, like, can I start with my own original sentence in task one? Okay, so this is Pavan. Can I start the overview with my own original sentence instead of paraphrasing. Uh, my answer here, Pavan, is don't do that. I don't recommend it uh, because when you paraphrase and give more details, it becomes your sentence. Also, you do not want to get too creative with uh, task one literature as this is better reserved for task two, which is worth two thirds of the total mark, total writing section mark and demands more creativity. Okay, so that's my answer for that one, Pavan. Just keep it simple, okay? Paraphrase, add the details. It becomes your own sentence, okay? Don't, don't get too fancy. Uh, I see students oftentimes getting really fancy or trying to get really fancy with their writing or their speaking, and all they're doing is they're hurting their uh, coherence and task completion scores going off topic, not making any sense. So be really careful with that, okay? All right, um, Charlie Sen says, how to think in speaking part two? Suppose the question is talk about a painting in your home. What is the painting about? Uh, when did you get it and why do you like it? Okay, and then Charlie, I'm guessing that you're thinking, well, I don't even have a painting in my home, so. Uh, what do I do? Okay, uh, Charlie, that's a really clever question, and I think a lot of students uh, struggle with this as well, where part two in the speaking, it's supposed to apply to any uh, student, but sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you're kind of the exception where you don't have a painting in your home. You're not into paintings. Maybe you have other kinds of decorations, and what do you do? You have this question. Okay, so Charlie is asking, how do I come up with a clever answer to part two uh, speaking cue card if it does not apply to me specifically? And no, students, you cannot ask for a different card. Sometimes students ask me that. Can I ask for a different card? No, you can't. Okay, you have to deal with it, unfortunately. That's just the way it goes. Okay, so uh, if it does not apply to me specifically. Okay, here's the answer, Charlie. You have to get creative, of course. And I know you know that. But how is the question, right? So you have to get creative. Here are a couple of ideas. Uh, think of a famous painting like the Mona Lisa and pretend you have a replica in your house. Make up the rest. 
You got it at an art gallery last year. It's the best replica that you've ever seen. It was painted by a local artist. You paid $100 for it. Okay, there's a lot there. Also, because a lot of us are really into movies and social media, uh, use that information. Okay, so think about a painting. So second, uh, think about movies and social media where you may have seen a painting that stuck with you and you can talk about it. Or even perhaps a book, okay? All right, does that make sense, students? Okay, Charlie, does that answer your question? So you have to use what's inside your head and you have to get creative. That's where it becomes even more important to use that one minute preparation time wisely visualize, get down some notes, okay? All right. Okay. Yeah, Pavan, so I see what you said there by just looking at the topic, the pie chart. Again, don't do that. So uh, use the, the information, Pavan, in the graph to give details to that first sentence, but paraphrase in that first sentence, okay? And I know, Charlie, that it's tough to do what I just said in a short time, but that's why you really have to practice and you have to use your creativity and your visualization. So when you prepare for the IELTS exam, it's a really good idea to spend lots of time reading books and visualizing so that you build your creative ability and creative fluency, so the speed that you can be creative. Okay. All right. Okay, Maja is asking, hi, I'm new here. Welcome, Maja. Um, I would like to know if in task one writing, we can use experience. It seems that, for example, uh, China experienced significant fall in its population. Um, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Um, experience means... Um, uh, Experience ha has a broad definition, Maja. It doesn't just mean a personal experience, so what happens to me, but experience also has the meaning of occurrence or happening, okay? It's a synonym for that, so you can, all right? Um, Maja is asking, can I use the term experience in task one writing uh, in certain in yeah in certain contexts absolutely so the answer here Maja is yes in correct context it can be well used as experience uh, as a verb especially is synonymous to um, happened or occurred in this case, okay? Now, there's a technique in literature. It's a literary device. Um, when you have some time, students, I highly recommend Googling this word or Googling this term. Okay, uh, literary devices and examples. Okay, so do a little bit of a review on this. Uh, one type of literary device or example, and I'm sure you're familiar with many of these, especially if I were to tell you these in your own language. One of these is personification. It's called personification. Um, and um, uh, we often use this in language. Personification means to give human-like qualities to non-human objects or creatures, okay? Uh, you can kind of get that from the word personification. So when we say China experienced, it's somewhat of a personification. We're personifying the country of China as if it were a person, 
Does that make sense, Maja? So it's a type of personification. So if you write China experienced an increase in, okay, it's somewhat, it's not exactly, but it's somewhat a personification, all right, as well. Okay, hope that makes sense. Uh, Roshni if, say, is asking if anybody is interested in practicing speaking. Let me know. You can practice speaking on the websites as well. There's an option for that. It's student partner speaking in your My Student account. And I see Musafir says yes. Okay, Angelina, we discussed the summary already. Um... And Maja is asking, also, I'd like to ask for the same in task one writing academic. Is it worth to mention blah, blah, blah? It, is it too subjective? I'm not sure what you mean by that, Maja. Maybe you can clarify that for me. Uh, Mohit is asking, how many minimum complex sentences am I supposed to write in task two? Okay, Mohit, that's an interesting question. All right to make it to CLB 10 or to make it a band nine. Okay, so, okay, that's a good question, Mohit. I like that question. So Mohit is asking how many complex, let's make it a little bit more robust, complex and compound uh, sentences am I supposed to include in my writing, not just um, task uh, two, Mohit, but task one and task two. Okay, let's put them together, writing section, to be considered an expert user of English. Band nine. Okay, that is a really interesting question, Mohit. It's a good question. The answer? There is no specific number. Rather, the use of the sentences and their accuracy is more important. Having stated this, the average complex sentence is roughly 20 words. That means a band nine writing response will be about 220 words for task one and 310, let's say, words for task two, roughly. Okay, I'm just kind of taking a mean or an average here, which means a total of about, let's say, about 530 words. Okay, for simplicity's sake, it could be 520, uh, which means that from this, if we divide 520 by, so I'm trying to create the logic for you here, Mohid, and everybody, so you can kind of understand if you want to really wrap your head around it, how it works, okay? So 530, um, so it means you have about roughly, if, it's, if you're using all complex sentences and compound sentences, you have roughly about 25 to 26 sentences. That's for both task one or, and task two. Everybody with me so far in this kind of game of essay math? Are you guys kind of following me here, what I'm showing you so far? So on the same page so far? Yeah? I don't want to lose you because then I'm just explaining this concept for myself. Okay. Um, I think maybe some of you probably thought, oh, wow, I thought it was 150 words for uh, task one. Yeah, that's 150 words minimum, right? Minimum. 
uh, 150 words minimum is not likely going to be a band nine. Okay, a band nine student is very likely going to write more than 150 words. Okay, I've never really seen a band nine task one that's only 150 words. Okay, and same thing with task two. Task two is 250 words minimum. Again, a band nine student, even a band eight student, is very, very likely going to be over the 250 word mark. Uh, just to give you a good idea of this, uh, if you take the TOEFL exam, the TOEFL exam, the minimum is 300 words for task two. It's very similar to IELTS, and it's also 40 minutes. So in the TOEFL, they actually expect you to write 50 more words in the same amount of time, okay? So, uh, let's say you have uh, 25 to 26 sentences. Now, a band nine, so let's take it one step further, band eight to band nine uh, essay or writing section will be about 20 complex sentences and 10 simple sentences. If we really want to kind of technically pull this piece of the evaluation apart, um, you're definitely going to have a lot of complex sentences because most ideas that you're explaining in the expository and persuasive essay are better written as complex sentences because you're joining together the ideas with comparing them, cause and effect, right, condition, uh, addition, so all of those words that are used for these conjunctions like therefore, contrast on the other hand, furthermore, addition, so they're creating these complex compound sentences. Natalie, I'm sorry that your tablet's dying, but don't worry, uh, this class is recorded, so you will be able to see the rest of it later, okay? Sammy, I don't recommend using an idiom in the beginning of the essay. Uh, it's awkward. Uh, just use your own language, okay? All right, let's see. Okay, Roshni, contrast, same kind of concept as cause and effect. Okay. Uh, Bekjan's asking an interesting question too. Bekjan says, how can we remember the name of a scientist and their suggestions in the reading passage, especially if there are many of them? Yeah, there's one type of question, Bekjan, in the academic where you have to connect um, the action to the scientist or to the person. Right? Um, Beck John, you have to use visualization for that, okay? Uh, visualize the name, make a connection to it, and then visualize uh, what they're doing. So visualization is definitely your best tool, Beck John, for remembering names and, of people and what they have done, okay? So uh, you have to use what's called mnemonic devices. Um, Beck John, I'd love to go into more detail on that as well, but I am shortly running out of time. So to help remember names of people in the reading section and their achievements or suggestions, activities, uh, you must use mnemonic, never spell that word right with that silent, there we go, Mne yeah, mnemonic devices, yeah, uh, it's kind of memory techniques, okay, memory techniques, um, and there's a lot of good uh, suggestions for these uh, memory techniques or what's called mnemonic devices online. So um, just uh, search for mnemonic devices, uh, Google these. So I would Google 
um, memory devices or uh, mnemonic devices for remembering names. Okay, so Google that back, John, and you'll find lots of goodies for that one. Okay. All right, students, that's all the time I have for questions. I'm sure that you have lots more questions for me. You can always send me an email. And of course, I host these Q&A classes once every two weeks for our members. So um, good questions. Remember on the website, we've got forums as well and uh, blogs that help to answer a lot of these questions. So make sure to uh, visit us and join us on our websites at uh, aehelp.com for academic IELTS. So that's aehelp.com for academic IELTS and g-i-e-l-t-s help.com for general IELTS, okay? Uh, Rahul Preet, General IELTS Task 1. You'll find that on our General IELTS YouTube channel, okay, which is General IELTS Help, or on our General IELTS uh, website as well, okay? All right, hopefully, students, I will see you shortly in 30 minutes. We have a Speaking Part 3 class coming up. Uh, that class uh, will be um, following yesterday's Speaking Part 2 topic about counterfeit products. So especially if you were in uh, yesterday's part two speaking class, then I highly recommend this one because it's connected to that topic. So you'll probably find it quite interesting. You're very welcome. Thank you new members for joining. I'll wait for your email so I can hook you up with your perks. Much love to all of you from Budapest. Bye for now. See you in 30 minutes.